Ultraman The Next was the next movie that I watched. Um, I decided to watch that in between finishing Ultraman Dinah and starting Conan the Adventurer Season 2. And I'm really glad I did. So I saw on Twitter, somebody mentioned that it was on Tubi. And they were really excited. So I was like, I should probably check it out. It might not be bad. And I'm glad I did. It was a solid movie. An hour, 20 minutes long. And it was really good. Um, the entire plot is this monster from outer space fuses with a human. And then an Ultraman comes down and does the same with another human. Um, so the villain of the movie was a human who got taken over. He was uh, a military man and he slowly became more and more evil as he was taken over by the monster. Uh, on the other hand, the hero of the film was an air force pilot who, um, combined with the Ultraman, except the Ultraman didn't want to forcefully take him over. He wanted it to be a willing combination. And what made the villain very interesting, which they called to him The One, which not exactly the best name ever, and then they called the Ultraman The Next because he was the next one. Um, that was a little dumb, but other than that, it was, you know, pretty neat. Um, the monster would absorb animals into himself and begin to transform, so his form kept changing throughout the movie, and it was actually pretty cool looking i mean a little cheesy with the face but um it was very interesting as he kept getting bigger and crazier looking and then the finale of the movie they're fighting in the sky but um so the main character um which i'm blanking on his name you know i've seen too many of these <laughs> all in a row um but anyways, his son is uh, suffering from a congenital heart issue, and he might die at any point, so he's been worried about his son. So he was going to retire from the Air Force and go into the private sector as in a, just a regular pilot. Um, but on his last night, he um, there is a uh, alarm that goes off because there's an, there's a... Uh, a UAP or a UFO and they're trying to figure out what it is so they fly off to go check it out and then that's when the red energy flies into his ship causing it to crash and he fuses with Ultraman he doesn't really know anything about Ultraman until way later when he gets um, taken by this uh, intelligence officer where she basically explains that there was like an alien attack or something um, and then, as the movie goes on, him and the monster fight twice. The first time is uh, when he hasn't gotten full control, and the monster is only, like, house-sized, and hasn't gotten much bigger. And then, um, the, fin the final fight takes place in the city, uh, where he the the one has grown massive sized and that's when the main character actually uh finally combines with ultraman completely and the two of them fight and then eventually um the ultraman the next learns how to fly and that's when the monster summons all these birds to fly into him so he can turn into uh, grow basically giant bat wings, uh, you know, basically he looked like a demon or the devil, and the two of them began fighting in the sky, and it was very excellent. And, you know, it was, it was a nice, concise story from beginning to end, and it was only about an hour and 20 minutes, so it was solid. And it was uh, a, a nice uh, breath of fresh air compared to Ultraman Dinah, which dragged. Which, again, I'll say, the finale of Ultraman Dinah is incredible. And those are three episodes 100% worth watching. But getting to the finale was the hardest part. Um, but yeah, uh, Ultraman the Next was a lot of fun. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do Ultra Q or if I'm going to do uh, something else after. Um, but once I'm done with... Uh, there's a stupid fly in here. 
It's freaking summertime. I hate this. But anyways, um, Ultra, Ultraman Q, or I mean Ultra Q, or one of those other series, I'll start after Conan the Adventurer, unless you know. We finally get that Gamera show that we're waiting for. 